Hello everyone. Welcome to the inauguration ceremony for Spaceport S Range. It's a beautiful winter day here in northern Sweden and we're so excited to have you with us. Today we'll be celebrating a major space milestone. Spaceport S Range is the first space station in Europe to offer satellite launch services for the European mainland. What's so special about that? Well, at Swedish Space Corporation, we're on a mission to help Earth benefit from space. By adding the capability of launching satellites from European soil, we're realizing one of our goals and helping ensure peace, prosperity, and freedom for the European Union and all of humanity. And S-Range is especially suited to the task. With the cooperation of the Sami people and their reindeer herds, SSC maintains more than 500 square kilometers of isolated wilderness, perfect for launching satellites. Our guest speakers today will include the chair of Swedish Space Corporation, Anna Kinberg Batra, the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, the Prime Minister of Sweden, Ulf Kristersson, and helping cut the ribbon, none other than His Majesty, the King of Sweden. Other special guests will include the Director General of the European Space Agency, executives from Mariana Space Group, ISAR Aerospace and OHP Sweden, as well as many other prominent industry representatives, distinguished commissioners and ministers. While we're waiting for the ceremony to begin, let me tell you a little bit more about S-Range and SSC. S-Range is one of the most versatile and sustainable space stations in the world and the main hub of the SSC Connect network. For over 50 years, we've helped scientists, institutions, and commercial companies access the wonders of space. SSC has launched over 700 sounding rockets from S-Range and over 1,000 stratospheric balloons. Not only that, SSC has ground stations all over the world where we support satellite communications, lunar missions, and launcher tracking. We also provide engineering services for manned missions and data analytics for global awareness. How do satellites help Earth benefit from space? The list of applications is practically endless. Monitoring climate change, pollution, deforestation, agriculture, conservation, and crisis management. These things go hand in hand with the themes our attendees We'll be discussing today including democratic values, a green transition, European competitiveness, and security. Spaceport S-Range will help enable all of this and much more by providing access to space with a focus on security and sustainability. Thank you for your patience. Our guests are touring the facility. The ceremony will begin shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, the inauguration is about to start, so please can you join us by the main stage. The inauguration ceremony is about to start, so can you please join us by the main stage. Thank you. Once again, welcome everyone. Welcome to the inauguration for Spaceport S-Range. It's a beautiful winter day here in northern Sweden and we're so excited to have you with us. Today we're celebrating a major space milestone. Spaceport S-Range is the first space station in Europe to offer satellite launch services from the European mainland. What's so special about that? Well, at SSC Space Corporation, at Swedish Space Corporation, we're on a mission to help Earth benefit from space. By adding the capability of launching satellites from European soil, we're realizing one of our goals in helping ensure peace, prosperity, and freedom from the European Union and all of humanity. And S-Range is especially suited to the task. With the cooperation of the Sami people and their reindeer herds, SSE maintains more than 500 square kilometers of isolated wilderness, perfect for launching satellites. Our guest speakers today will include the chair of Swedish Space Corporation, Anna Kimber Batra, the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, the prime minister of Sweden, Ulf Kristersson, and helping cut the ribbon, none other than His Majesty, the King of Sweden. Other special guests include the Director General of the European Space Agency, executives from Ariana Space, ISAR Space, and OHP Sweden, 
as well as many other prominent industry representatives, distinguished commissioners, and ministers. While we're waiting for the ceremony to begin, let me tell you a little bit more about S-Range and SSC. S Your Majesty, Madam President, Prime Minister, Commissioner, Ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, and now also all of you watching us on live stream. Welcome, welcome again to Sweden's spaceport since 1966, but from today, the Europe, the EU mainland's first spaceport, S-Range, in the north of Sweden. As chair of the Swedish Space Corporation, it's my honor and pleasure to welcome you all here and to today's inauguration. Today, it may feel like a small step for us, but this could be a very important giant leap, actually, for Europe. This third Swedish EU presidency must prioritize security, and space enables us to be stronger on security. Space enables us to be competitive since everything digital and almost everything in our everyday lives is reliant on satellite networks which can be powered here from and at this spaceport. And space is important for sustainability and the green transition. When we can watch the Earth and understand what happens on it and even under it, we can be wiser on what to do with the climate and how to help our only planet. Space-enabled access to data information and communication are strategic for any leaders in the world, which is why European leaders need to invest in it. And I'm very happy to see all of you go around looking at these areas of space here today. These are key to a better Europe and the world. Again, let me thank you so much for coming here. It's a great honor and pleasure for me to be part of this. And I will thank everyone who made this today's inauguration possible. This inauguration of the EU mainland's first spaceport may feel like a small step for us today, but it enables giant leaps for Europe ahead. And now it's my honor and pleasure to welcome you to the inauguration itself, where we will have our most distinguished guests. We will see both the Prime Minister of Kistersson, Madam President of the Commission Ursula von der Leyen, and His Majesty the King of Sweden, starting with the Prime Minister and my dear friend Ulf Kristersson. Welcome. Thank you so much. Anna, it's a true pleasure to be here. Your Majesty, ladies and gentlemen, it's wonderful to be in this very distinguished crowd here today for this very special occasion. It's really been inspiring to listen to previous speakers who really know what they are talking about. And it's clear that exploring space helps us to understand our place in the universe. But Space technology and data can also be used to improve the conditions of humankind on Earth. Climate change mitigation is a priority, and space data is key to analyzing changes and identifying effective countermeasures. Space is a global common, and we need to have responsibility to future generations to secure that its use is fair and sustainable. We should all be able to share the benefits of space-based infrastructure and services. This approach also reflects the focus in the space policy area of the Swedish presidency, as we strive for a greener, safer, and freer Europe. Therefore, I am so pleased to be here at S-Range today, together with all of you. With half a century, of successful space activities and some 600 launches of sounding rockets. The current geopolitical situation, not least, of course, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, has demonstrated how important it is that the European Union has access to space. S-Range's unique geographical position and long service makes it ideal for launches of satellites in polar orbits and other space activities. For this reason, Sweden has invested 
in the S-range load uh, pad, which will strongly contribute to resilience and access to space. This is actually unique. It is the first facility of its kind of mainland Europe, and I know that it is made possible by teamwork with trusted international partners. S-Range is also an excellent example of how high-quality education and research are essential to our prosperity and contribute to European long-term competitiveness. With these words, I would like to pass the floor to the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. Dear Ursula, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prime Minister, Your Majesty, colleagues from the College, dear Ministers, distinguished guests, President of the Swedish Space Corporation, Director General of the European Space Agency, I am delighted to be here with you today to join this inauguration here. It's a big moment. It's a big moment for Europe. It's a big moment for Europe's space industry. The first orbital launch site on European mainland. This spaceport offers an independent European gateway to space. It is exactly the infrastructure we need, not only to continue to innovate, but also to further explore the final frontier. I was fascinating to listen to the scientists that introduced us to the different topics and possibilities that are here. The important work you have been doing here for many, many years is a shining example of the enormous potential of space-based research, indeed, to improve our daily life. Galileo, Copernicus, the new IRIS system have been cited a lot today. And if you look at, for example, the green transition, one of the topics we've been discussing here, climate change. Well, if we want to efficiently track the effects of climate change, space provides 60% of the measurements we need. Just look from space and you have the majority of data that you need to understand what's going on or take civil protection or traffic management. I will never forget the help of Copernicus we got amidst the pandemic when we had to establish our green lanes to manage as best in a very critical situation. It was Copernicus who helped us and gave us the data that were necessary on a daily basis, really to make decisions that are crucial. This leading edge spaceport gives Europe the capabilities to address this growing demand. The benefits of small satellites that can be launched from here are immense. We've just heard that it is important to launch over and over these satellites, to have the reusability, to test it. And I was thrilled to hear what is necessary is not so much the investment, yes, this is also necessary, but it's the political will. So I say it to my audience, let's take this as a strong message to show the political will. I've spoken about climate mitigation, but adaptation is equally important. For example, we can track natural disasters in real time. We will never forget, and we've all seen the terrible droughts and floods and forest fires and yes, they are horrible, but you have to act instantly. And more eyes in the sky then are crucial to help save lives in Europe and around the world. Small satellites, we've heard, that are also important, of, of importance for our security. Today we know that the brave Ukrainian forces effectively uses small satellites to track the movements of Russian troops and because of this growing importance overall, many, many topics that I couldn't touch upon today, 
The Commission will make a proposal for an EU space strategy for security and defense. The aim is to improve the resilience of the European space infrastructure and strengthen our shared European capabilities. Finally, we are working tirelessly to change the way we do space. This means encouraging the involvement of SMEs and startups in EU flagship initiatives. There's a lot to do. We need you. For example, the Copernicus dynamic purchasing system. It also means promoting access to finance for space entrepreneurs in Europe. So there are so many good reasons why we need to accelerate the European space program. You show us the shining example for it today. I would like to thank everyone involved in this project. Europe has its foothold in space and we will keep it. Thank you very much. And finally, to conduct the inauguration, well, please welcome His Majesty the King. And last, and last but not least, I now give the floor to conclude this to the sw first Swedish astronaut, Mr. Christopher Fuglesang. Dr. Christopher Fuglesang. Now the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, At SSC, we like to say space is the future, and now from Spaceport S-Range, we're ready to take you there. If you have questions about any of the advanced space services offered by Swedish Space Corporation, please send an email to info at sscspace.com. Thank you for watching.